Hey there, hi there, ho there, and welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. My name is Michael, I am a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm diving right into the today's episode, as you can tell by all my ingredients and tools being on in front of me, because uh, there's not a lot to preface here, which is always weird to do immediately following an episode that has an absolute shitload of preface. No, today we are in fact talking about a riff of last Friday's cocktail, the Caipirinha, called the Caipiroska, which has next to no history, no individual creator, no first year of production, and no real history whatsoever, which is super fucking weird and kind of annoying. Even when it comes down to cocktails that are definitely riffs of uh, pre-existing cocktails with very minimal variety, I still like to know who came up with them, the, the idea behind it, who came up with the thing that I like to drink. I just like to know that. The Caipiroska is unfortunately not one of those cocktails. You see, the Caipirinha became wildly popular in Brazil and eventually branched its way out into other countries. And when that branching out happened, like here, like it has here in the US, the rest of the liquor industry kind of flowed in. <laughs> Brazil not initially being a sort of, well, rather not really being thought of as a mixological hub of the world, eventually changed and liquor companies started to flood the country with their product. This included new spirits that were not originally available, including rum, vodka, and even sake, all three of which have variations of the Caipirinha attributed to them. <laughs> this is one of those situations where you've realized your cocktail has become a standard. You sub the base and that is it, and it is now a different cocktail. We have all taken inspiration from this very specific thing and used that format and technique to create our own cocktails. That is the basis of becoming a standard, and that is super, super cool. There are a couple different variations of the Caipirinha, and we're looking at the Caipiroska today, which uses vodka. Now, the Caipiroska is actually a registered name that was taken by Smirnoff some time back, but no one knows who initially coined it or where it initially came from. I saw one mention of uh, it potentially being connected to a small English bar at some point, probably in the 90s, 2000s. I have no proof that that is what happened. <laughs> like I had mentioned, uh, liquor companies flooded their products into Brazil, and it's most likely the case that when new products came to be available, Brazilians decided to put them into their favorite cocktails, the Caipirinha being easily the most popular one. And it led to a bunch of different riffs that have different names. Vodka makes a Caipiroska, um, rum, specifically Bacardi, makes a Caipirismo, use of sake, which I thought was really fascinating because it's very low proof compared to vodka and rum, is a kaipisake. Super original name there, folks. <laughs> All of this is to say that there's no history, but there doesn't necessarily need to be. This is one of those very simple variations that is easy to get behind, and for people who are not fans of cachaça, can still enjoy. One that when people can still enjoy. So let's make a kaipiroska. The last time I had a Kaiparoska, I was at a bar called Three Dots and a Dash in Chicago, uh, in River North, with my roommate at the time. Uh, his name's Riley, he's a cool guy. He ordered one, I had never tried it before, I thought it was awesome, but I have a very vague memory of the profile, so let's make one and see how well I remember the Kaiparoska. The Kaiparoska is made using the same spec as a Kaiparinha, and that starts with four teaspoons of sugar, and a teaspoon is equivalent to a bar spoon. We're gonna go ahead and quarter a whole lime. We're gonna cut those quarters down and then take the pith off the center of them to prevent too much bitterness from getting into our cocktail. With all of our lime quarters pressed into the cocktail shaker, we're gonna muddle those down with the sugar, take that sugar starting to dissolve and extracting all those oils and juices out of the fruit. Don't press too hard. You don't wanna make this too bitter. You're just trying to get the juices out and to get everything moderately, very gently combined. Finally, the last thing we're going to need is two ounces of vodka. Like I mentioned, Smirnoff is the one who registered this name. So technically speaking, a Kaipiroska is probably made, uh, you know, legally speaking with Smirnoff, but vodka's vodka. Use a very nice vodka, um, something expensive. That's how you make a good vodka cocktail. I'm gonna throw uh, some ice in here to give this a very, very brief shake, and then we are good to serve. Whole sugar will never quite fully dissolve. No matter how hard you shake it, you will just end up over diluting your drink. So we are just gonna give this a very, very fast, hard blitz to chill it down using just one cube of ice in order to prevent over dilution. Tap it up, tap it down, and give it that nice hard blitz. 
That's it. We're gonna grab a double old fashioned glass. We're gonna take off the top of our shaker here and this just gets full open poured directly in. Gonna hit this with just a little bit of extra ice just to fill out the glass and make sure it stays nice and cold. That one didn't break all the way, damn it. And that goes without a garnish, just like a Kaipurini does. That is a Kaipuroska. So with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and have a taste of our Kaipuroska, a cocktail I've had one sip of before. Cheers. Yeah, that's, um, it's Kaipuroska. <laughs> there is something about it um, worth noting. Um, it being a variation on the Kaipurinia, it hits the exact same notes that are not reliant on the spirit. All of that sort of funky metallicness that was so interesting and cool and gave it dimension and evolution is gone. We've just got vodka now. It's very base level. And what it's really doing is highlighting the flavors of the lime oils and the lime juice and bringing that to the forefront and allowing that to be the majority of what you taste. It's not bad, but it is a lot less complex. That being said, it's not unpleasant. And what's really fascinating about it is that I'm remembering what Riley and I said about it uh, when he got one. He described it as tasting like the uh, purple, white, and blue popsicles, which are, if I'm not mistaken, lime oil flavored, or at least that white section is lime flavored, I think and it tastes exactly like that. And yeah, it does, it's pretty close. This is a lot more fresh, a lot more in your face, a lot more loud, a lot less sweet, but very, very similar. It's the exact same note, um, if, you, if not the exact same presentation. It's really light, you know, lightly sweet, good amount of citrus flavor, a little bit of that vodka impact, you know, that kind of alcohol, the just raw alcohol flavor. It's uh, it's a fine drink. Um, and I mean, this whole thing is kind of prefaced, even this video is titled under the preface that this is a bootleg Kaiparina. And I find that to be true. Um, anything that kind of just takes the idea of a recipe and throws a different spirit into it without really thinking about how that spirit affects the profile of the cocktail, um, which vodka would exactly do because it has no care no character. That I think is kind of bootleg. But the thing is, this is not like somebody trying to fake a Kaipurinia. They're always passing this off as a Kaipurinia. It's Kaiparoska. It's a different thing. And what I'm really getting at by pointing out this distinction is that um, it's not a bootleg because Brazilians most likely came up with it. <laughs> in essence, the, the, the ability to put vodka in it for the sake of people who are not very dedicated to those flavors um, has allowed them to create a new cocktail to fit that, you know, desire. And yeah, I think it works perfectly. <laughs> I prefer Kaiparinias. There's way more, way more interesting shit going on in a Kaiparinia. But that is honestly just as good. And if you don't got cachaça, I will happily order that for the sake of having something reminiscent of it. It's very, very tasty. So it is that time again, before we go ahead and close out today's episode, I'm gonna go ahead and read another entry from our book, Crisp Toasts, wonderful words that add wit and class to every time you raise your glass. How about eat my sass? That's the same joke I did last time, but less funny. Imagine that. We are still in the absent friends section, unfortunately. I do wish there was a way for me to better pull from this, you know, to pull from this randomly more effectively. But I know that if I were just to flip through pages, I would eventually hit a moment where I pick one I've read before and I won't recognize it in time to choose a different one. Today's entry from Crisp Toasts is read as such. Here's to our faraway friends. May their spirits be with us as soon as these spirits are in us. So that is today's episode of Mike's Heart Reviews. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed another kind of chaotic and shorter Tuesday upload. Um, if you did, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe down below. That's the best way for me to know how I'm doing with the show. Um, I have noticed a little bit of growth recently. I am very happy for that. For those of you who are, you know, coming here for the first time and watching the show, thank you so much for coming here and watching the show. I really appreciate it. If you want to, you can follow me on my socials that are appearing on the screen right now. I don't use them super actively. I try to post it on TikTok, you know, at least, you know, four times a week, you know, on days that I upload and the days following that. I'm trying to get myself into that. It's very difficult and I don't like text-based platforms. So 
TikTok and YouTube are where I mostly reside, followed immediately by Instagram. So follow me wherever you like. There's a chance, maybe, that I'll be there sometimes. That is uh, today's episode of the show. Thanks again for watching. And remember, everybody, to please drink responsibly and have a great rest of your afternoon. Cheers, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.